Okay, so we proceed to the topic influence lines for trusses. Trusses are often used as primary load carrying elements for bridges. Hence, for design, it is important to be able to construct the influence lines for each of its members. The loading on the bridge deck is transmitted to stringers, which in turn transmit the loading to the floor beams and then the joints along the bottom cord of the truss. So we can see here on the, di the diagram of a simple layout of a trusses, we have the stringers. These are the floor stringers that's usually carried by the girders here. And then these girders, as well as the floor beam, will transmit it to the bottom of the truss, as well as the reactions. So we have here bracing, sway bracing, top cord, and then uh, deck. So the deck are the main uh, surface wherein the loading will move from one place to another. So as a solution, we will use a unit load, uh, the same unit load, and then uh, determine the solution for each of the members or the concerned members in the trust. So we will use equilibrium method to do that. So for the first problem, we have here a simple trust wherein we are going to draw the influence line for the forces for member HD, CH, and GH. So live loads are transmitted to the bottom cords of the trusses. So first, we need to locate or all of the members that are unknown here. So HD, so this is HD, CH, and GH. So the most convenient solution here is to use or utilize section method and then uh, take note of the force that will be involved in your trust. First for member HD. Member HD could be derived by method of joints so we'll just consider a joint D we'll just draw the X and Y axis for joint D and then of course there will be force members at DE and CD. And then HD. So HD is the first unknown. So HD could be simply derived by this equilibrium equation forces vertical is equal to zero so again we apply a moving load from left to right starting at a and then tabulate our data say with the corresponding x there will be a value for hd so as we can see, if your 1 will be located where, where x is 0, or located at A, hd would, not, would have no value at all. And then moving it from b to b, so x becomes now 4, and hd have no value yet. And then moving it to c, 
where x is 8 there will be no value for hd and then moving it to d itself okay we're in x is 12 this is the time that your unit load now will be present on your joint d okay so only that when x will be situated on d itself so therefore h this will be simply equal to one and then transferring your one to e of course one will be vanished here so x is equal to 16 your hd is equal to zero so simply your influence line diagram will be like this so this is 0 4 8 12 so there will be a value for x is equal to 12 so here it is so when x is 8 your value is 0 okay and when x is 4 it is 0 and when it is 0 hd is 0 and when it is 16 it is 0 so we'll just connect that one therefore this one and then this is the ild for member hd okay so moving on to the next unknown we have for member ch for member ch ch is this member so it is much convenient to use now section method wherein we will just involve a cut section passing through gh ch and cd considering the right portion so illustrating the cut section see the cut section see this is the member now this cut section will indicate the directions see I'll assume it to be GH so we assume this to be CD. Say this is tensile CH. So it will in now involve reaction at two. So reaction at 2 is changing value where 1 moves from A to E. So we will hit CH by a single equilibrium equations. And of course, GH and CD here could not meet at one point. However, they are parallel. So therefore, CH could be simply derived by summation forces vertical is equal to zero. Since CH is the only force that would resist R2 since GH and CD has no vertical component. 
So we perform this and of course we take note of your slope here. Okay, we're gonna have the slope of CH for this purpose. So it has a vertical slope of 3, horizontal of 4, and uh, hypotenuse of 5. So therefore, summation for vertical CH is simply the okay, we have negative CH the component of vertical is to be multiplied or CH times 3 fifth and then plus R2 is equal to 0 so simply CH will be equal to reaction at 2 times 5 all over 3 so remember that R2 here is changing so we will be needing the reaction at 2 so we will be utilizing here the ILD for R2 so we can do it by Muller Breslau Say the reaction of 2 is here and then uh, this one. Say this is 1. Say there will be ordinates on each of the segment. say this is y1 y2 y3 this is 4 each of the span is 4 so you can say that y1 is to 4 as to 1 is to 16 which, which is also equal to y2 all over 8 which is also equal to y3 all over 12 so y1 is 4 over 16 or that is equal to 1 fourth and then y2 is equal to 8 all over 16 or that is 1 half and y3 is 12 all over 16 that is equal to 3 all over 4 now we take note that is that if our unit load is still within A and B, it is not present on our cut section here. Okay, so we now tabulate say X R2 and CH. When x is 0, our R2, so by, by the way, this is ILD for R2. So R2 will be also equal to 0. Therefore, CH will be also equal to 0. And then when x is 4, Okay, your 1 will be at point B now. The value is Y1. The value of R2 is Y1, which is 1 fourth. So we multiply R2 to 5 thirds. It will yield to Five all over twelve. 
then again we transfer year one where x is 8 so that is at c so at c the value is y2 is one half we multiply it to 5 thirds we have positive 5 all over 6 now if year 1 will now be situated on D so see this is D it will now be present on your cut section so 1 here will be included in your equation here so your equation for that CH so this is at D we have R2 times 5 thirds will now include the unit load that is going downwards that is negative 1 ok so we continue when x is 12 the value of r is y3 this 3 fourths so we use this equation we multiply 3 fourths to 5 thirds and subtract it by 1 anyway your equation should uh, be revised so we have neg negative ch times 3 fifth plus r2 minus 1 is equal to 0 so we transpose these two terms or we'll just have to transpose this becomes positive ch times 3 fifth is equal to r2 minus 1 then therefore ch is r2 minus 1 times 5 all over 3 so this time we substitute r2 that is 3 fourths 3 fourths minus 1 times 5 thirds that would yield to negative 5 twelfths okay so negative 5 all over 12 so we continue tabulating when x is 16 your reaction at 2 would become 1 okay still your 1 here will be included in the equation see so this will just transfer here so we use the same equation this one so r2 1 minus 1 times 5 thirds 1 minus 1 is 0 so therefore your ch will be equal also to 0 ok so we put it in a diagram say when x is 0 we have 0 value when x is 4 ch is 5 twelfths or 8 twelve. 5 all over 12 and then when x is 8 we have 5 all over 6 
and then when x is 16 we have uh, when x is 12 we have negative 5 over 12 which will yield to 0 at this point when x is equal to 16 ch is 0 so we connect that See it five over six. So we label when x is four, that is five positive five twelve. This is positive five sixth. This is negative five twelve and that this is equal to zero so this therefore this will be our ild for member ch okay so we now proceed to the last member we are done with this so for the last member we have this GH and uh, practically we will use the same cut section because it will be involving GH here so again we will choose a single equilibrium equation to obtain your member GH and obviously could be done by intersecting CH and CD to point C and then we take moments at C to obtain GH so summation moments at C is equal to 0 we have negative gh times the moment arm 3 plus r2 times 8 is equal to 0 and therefore r2 is equal to gh times 3 8 next we tabulate of course gh is r2 times 8 all over 3 so this will be an equation that will be applicable only to a loading which is just left of D so this is point D so when your loading is within this boundary or the left portion this could be applied and uh, when your one will now be present at this cut section okay. there will be different equation for that okay we now tabulate say x uh, 
R2. And GH. And by the way, in your assumption, GH and R2 will go into the same direction. Practically, it is obvious here that GH should be a compressive because it will just resist the rotation along R2. So, I'll just show you that we do not have to change that. Rather, we'll just change this sign. And thus, this shall be negative. Hence, this is also negative. So that when x is 0, r2 will be 0. And gh will be equal to zero also and take note that the negative sign here will just indicate a wrong assumption for gh so we still get the absolute value of this only that instead of gh to be tensile it should be compressive Okay, so we, we then transfer your 1 when x is, e, is equal to 4. Okay, so when x is equal to 4, our value for your r2 is 1 fourth. Hence, we multiply 1 fourth to 8 thirds. And that would be equal to? Two thirds. Okay, so we note here that GH is compression. Okay. And then uh, transferring it to it, your value for R2 is one half. So, one half of eight thirds, we have a value of four thirds. And then, if x is 12, the value is uh, y3, three fourths. So, hence, three fourths will be multiplied to. R2 or 8 thirds. However, this is where your 1 will now be present in our diagram. So it will now be present here. See, this is one. So we can no longer use this one, but rather to build another equation for that. When x is 12, then your r2 is... Three fourths. So we take moments at C. Okay. We have negative GH times three minus R two times eight. So we add 1 here, that is a clockwise, 1 times 4 is equal to 0.
So one as for distance from C. Okay, that's it. And then uh, we tra we transpose all of the terms the right side. So it becomes R two times eight minus four. And therefore negative g h is equal to eight r two minus four all over three again g h is negative so there therefore g h is negative eight R2 plus 4 all over 3 and we get negative 3 fourths we get the absolute, absolute value sorry this should be 2 thirds So negative simply means this in compression. So just get the absolute value of that. And then finally, when x is 16, r2 would be equal to 1. So your 1 here will move to this location so we will build another equation for that see we erase this for a while when x the 16 r2 is equal to 1 taking moments at c we have negative gh times 3 minus r2 times 8 plus 1 times 8 is equal to 0 so when r is equal to 1 so we just indicate 1 here so 1 times 8 plus 1 times 8 this will just be cancelled and therefore GH will be equal to zero. zero. Okay, so finally we put that into the diagram. Zero, four, eight, twelve. So when X is zero, GH is zero. When x is 4, gh is 2 thirds. Ah, by the way, this is compression. So, compression is indicated as negative. Okay? Negative 2 thirds. And then we have negative 4 thirds. Then we have negative 2 thirds and zero so we connect that by straight line so we will get this diagram okay so question why is it 
that we need to invert the sign of this. First and foremost, your GH is assumed to be tensile. Okay. And from the equation, we have indicated negative sign here. So all of these terms should be in negative. Or if you wanted to maintain this equation, you may do so. Okay. So again, uh, let us go back to this. We're in your unknown here is CH a while ago. Okay. So your CH is tensile again. So you did not need to invert the sign. So just stick to the sign of this. Derive. Derive uh, values of CH. Unlike if your G your member is in compression, it will your the equation will tell you that your assumption is uh, incorrect. So therefore, it will just indicate a negative sign there. Okay. So what I have done is to get. I have, I have adopted the positive values, although your equation is negative. Okay, so you may do it that way or just stick to the equation. Okay, that's it. So this is the ILD for for. GH. Where in fact, GH is compression. Okay. We just bear in mind that uh, a negative ordinate in the ILD, you remember, is in compression. Although here in CH, when your load or the ordinate is a positive one, therefore the member is in tension. So when transferring your loading or the unit load at this point, where x is 12, it would yield to negative value which indicates that your member is in compression when your loading is at this point or at point D so when your unit load is here see this is one The force member CH is in compression equivalent to 5 twelves. Okay. So that is the basic concept for the ILD of your process. So we move on to another example. So we have here a cantilever thrust supported by pin and a roller. So we need to draw the influence line for force member AB for BE and EF. So first we need to work with AB and obviously we are going to look at your truss here your AB is always equal to RE or the reaction at A
see this is RA and this is force member AB and AB is in compression given that we have a one that is moving from left to right say this is x so to obtain ra we simply take moments at e so taking moments at this point we can see that one by x minus R E times three is equal to zero. So therefore R E will be equal to X all over three, which is also always equal to A B. So we now tabulate and AB here is a uh, indicate that this is in compression as we can see here. So X R A or AB. So when X is zero, then R E is zero. So when x is 4, r is 4 thirds. When x is 8, r a is 8 thirds. And when x is 12, 12 over 3 is equal to 4. 2.67 and this is 1.33 so all of the values here should be negative since we have a compressive AB so we illustrate the diagram so this is 0 4 8 and 12 so we have your negative 4 negative 2.67 and negative 1.33 so we connect we just connect that one So this will now be our ILD for member AB. So ILD for force member AB. Okay. Now, if we if we are quite confused with the sign, okay, negative. What I suggest is you always assume your member to be tensile, okay, and then stick to the sign. Okay. Stick to the sign. 
so what happens if that is the uh, case so at joint a you can see see this is if this is r a we assume we are a b to be tensile okay by summation forces x we have R A plus A B is equal to zero. So the A B is equal to negative R A. So you assume your A B to be tensile and it yielded to a negative equation. So just stick to this negative equation and it will yield to the same result here. So that is the technique. You assume it to always to be a tensile and then just stick to the sign that your equation will give you okay so if not you will think rationally that a b should be compression okay? and a compression one is indicated by a negative sign okay so that's about the sign okay so moving on to the next unknown so this time we work on uh, force member force b so actually this is our b So, BA could be obtained much convenient if we are going to cut a section and consider the right here. So, illustrating the truss, we have um, F, G, B, C, D. So we have here B. Okay, so we assume it to be tensile. This is B. So this is A B. And this is F E R E F. So all are assumed to be tension, so you will have no problem on the sign. Just stick to the sign of the equation. So for BE, obviously BE is uh, obtained by summation forces vertical is equal to zero. At x is equal to zero, your unit load is within this location, so it is not yet present in your cut section. Therefore, performing this, we can say that BE is equal to zero. And transferring your x. To four so your one will be here already we take summation of uh, forces vertical we need to utilize the vertical component of BE so what is the slope we have four horizontal three vertical and this is obviously 5 so therefore BE will just be equal to or the component of BE vert vertical that is to be multiplied by 3 fifth minus 1 is equal to 0 so therefore 
BE is 1 times 5 all over 3. So BE is equal to 5 thirds or that is 1.67. So notice that your equation is always positive. Therefore, B is, BE would be in tension. Okay. So anyway, there will be no problem. Just adapt whatever is the result, whatever the sign of the result is. Okay. Now, when x is uh, 8, so your 1 will be present here. And it won't affect your equation because your equation does not involve a distance. Okay? Therefore, your equation stays at this function. So, so BE is also 1.67 and even if you transfer it at D your 1 will transfer there again it won't, it won't affect your equation so BE stays at 1.67 so simply your ILD 0, 4, 3, 12. So when x is 0, your BE is 0. When x is 4, your BE is 1.67 and stays at 1.67. Okay. So this will now be your ILD for member BE. Alright. Finally for uh, the last member EF. So for EF, the technique is just to intersect the two variables and leave FE. So we intersect BE and AB and we take moments at B. We come up with FE. Okay. So the solution here is summation forces. Sorry. Summation moments along B is equal to zero using this section okay so when x is zero one is not present on this cut section so therefore be will be equal to zero and when x is 4, 1 will now be at your b. Okay. So, nandito na siya. See, this is 1. Hence, if we take moments at b, your 1 here will have no moment arm. Okay. No moment arm. So, therefore, it stays to be equal to 0. And then we transfer your unit load at point C. Take moments B when X is uh, 8. Summation moments at B. We have 1 times 4 minus BE times 3 is equal to 0. So therefore, BE is equal to 4 thirds. And then finally, 
one will now be situated along the point D. Again, we take moments at B. So, when x is 12, first we have this one from B that is 8 meters. So, we have a clockwise 1 times 8 minus of course the same BE times T is equal to 0 so therefore BE is 8 all over 3 positive so we put that into a diagram Zero, one, eight, twelve. So when x is zero, b is zero, x is four, b is zero, x is eight, four thirds, x is twelve, eight thirds. We connect that by a straight line. So this will now be our ILD. So we put the ordinates. This is quarters, or that is equal to 1.33, and 8 all over 3 is 2.67. And this is 1.33. And that's it. This is ILD4 member B. Okay, so as simple as that. We are done with this problem. So I hope you practice some problems in order to come up with ILD for the members so this time i would like you to work on this so we have here a truss this is for your seat work for today work with ild for bh and then for gh and then for dc so we will have sit work or submitted activity next meeting so kindly work on this for a while for your practice okay